In every version of Wi-Fi, the IEEE has improved the protocol's performance, and Wi-Fi 7 is no exception. Of course, in regions where unlicensed use of the 6 GHz spectrum is permitted, access to the new frequency band will be a huge benefit to enterprises upgrading from Wi-Fi 5 or 6 to Wi-Fi 7. In addition, the data rates that Wi-Fi 7 supports are much higher than any of the previous versions of Wi-Fi. Here it's important to note that Wi-Fi 6E has the same capabilities as Wi-Fi 6, except for the fact that Wi-Fi 6E uses the new 6 GHz band. Wi-Fi 7 can use the new 6 GHz band or can rely only on the legacy 5 and 2.4 GHz. And Wi-Fi 7 also has the theoretical data rates that are over three times higher than Wi-Fi 6 or 6E. If you're an enterprise looking to upgrade your Wi-Fi network, the three features to watch for on Wi-Fi 7 are multi-link operation, multi-resource uh, multi units, and puncturing. Multi-link operation, or MLO, allows devices to communicate on two different bands, which helps reduce latency and increase reliability. Multi-RU and puncturing allows a more efficient use of partially used channels. The result is that Wi-Fi 7 will be faster, more reliable, and it will allow for lower latency communications. In terms of the Wi-Fi 7 forecast, we're going to see some pretty high growth rates over the next few years. A few vendors launched the first enterprise class Wi-Fi 7 APs in 2023. So some lucky enterprises have already deployed them in their networks. The Wi-Fi Alliance established their certification program for Wi-Fi 7 late in 2023, and they have published a list of almost 20 models of routers or APs that have been certified as Wi-Fi 7 compliant. We're expecting more vendors to announce and commercialize products in the upcoming months. By next year, in 2025, all of the major vendors will be selling Wi-Fi 7 APs, and lower-end models will also be more common. In 2025, we expect over a third of Wi-Fi AP revenues that will be from the sale of Wi-Fi 7. By 2027, sales of Wi-Fi 7 APs will be almost 60% of total AP revenues. The earliest adopters of Wi-Fi 7 will be enterprises with Wi-Fi 4, 5, or 6 in their networks. The majority of Wi-Fi 6 EAPs were shipped to North America, and we're not expecting customers who recently purchased Wi-Fi 6E to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 immediately. There will be a high demand for Wi-Fi 7 in regions that have not had access to Wi-Fi 6E, such as China and countries in Central and Southeast Asia, or regions that were slower to adopt Wi-Fi 6E, such as Europe. There are also opportunities for Wi-Fi 7 in regions of the world that are expanding their IT spending, such as the Middle East. The education vertical is the largest segment of the wireless LAN market, and that includes both primary schools for children under 18, as well as institutions for university-age students. Educational institutions have a high performance requirements, so I expect this vertical to be a leader in adopting Wi-Fi 7. The manufacturing vertical is also a large purchaser of wireless LAN equipment. The increased performance and reliability of Wi-Fi 7 will be very attractive to that sector especially the lower latency. In 2023, the three fastest growing vertical sectors in terms of wireless land purchases were logistics, hospitality, and healthcare. Logistics companies are using wireless land to enable many new use cases. For instance, to lower the costs and increase the safety of inventory management. Since the pandemic, many healthcare institutions have undertaken large digital transformation projects. We expect that most hospitals and logistics operations that are renewing their networks will choose the latest available technology with the best performance, which is Wi-Fi 7. Well, there's no doubt that we're in the midst of an AI revolution. AI is working on solving many of our biggest problems, and two of the biggest problems that enterprises face with their wireless LAN networks are network operations complexity, and ensuring a consistently good user experience. AI is being used more and more to help with those two problems. For the first problem, operations complexity, AI algorithms can make use of a vast array of historical network data to quickly identify the cause of network problems and even propose solutions, such as changing the equipment configuration or adding access points. Generative conversational interfaces, like the one used by ChatGPT, can also be used to search and simplify technical documentation 
can help the network operator determine the best approach to solving a network problem. AI can also help elevate the quality of user experience. By using data from applications that are using the network, such as video, AI models can optimize network configurations to ensure that an application runs smoothly. In theory, AI models could predict video quality issues before they occur and then automatically make the necessary network changes to avoid the problem completely. Thanks to AI, one day we'll never again have to suffer through a bad quality video call. There's a third area where, where AI models can be put to use to do some good. Many organizations are looking to reduce their carbon footprint by reducing the power that their IT equipment uses. AI model will be able to detect and then predict when there's a possibility to reduce the power consumption of equipment when the load on the network is lower, as an example. Well, security is definitely top of mind for all IT leaders. First, leaders can be reassured that Wi-Fi 7 uses the security standard WPA3, or Wi-Fi Protected Access 3, which was first introduced with Wi-Fi 6. If an enterprise is upgrading from Wi-Fi 5 that's using WPA2, they'll get a big security gain just from moving to WPA3. But over and above wireless LAN, enterprises are taking a broader view of security and moving to a zero trust framework. This framework helps protect against the various threat categories, such as eavesdropping or phishing, by means of continuous processes of authentication, authorization, and monitoring. Having a strong security strategy is critical when we consider the proliferation of IoT devices in the network and the fact that most employees are no longer working exclusively from their office locations. These changes can open new security breaches if enterprises are not looking at their network security in a holistic manner.